So one of the main things I've said in my career as a personal trainer, mentor, and educator is one of the most valuable things we do for our clients is write high quality, effective programming. This is something that a lot of trainers don't really do at a high enough level and they don't, and it reflects in their business results. So, so many people, as we know from my last blog post, but also just reading that a lot of trainers lost all their work during the COVID-19 breakdown. So what I wanted to do today was to be able to give you a very simple, really effective way to write programs for your clients based on breaking your program up into different components. If you can follow this kind of structure, there's a very logical way to be able to write your programs. And then you can individualize what you need for the client at what particular time. So with the program, we want four components that we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at the warm up, we're gonna look at the main lifts, we're gonna look at the accessory movements, and we're gonna look at the cool down. So with the warm up, there's a couple of things that we wanna do. First one is we wanna individualize it based on needs. So what do I mean by that? If someone has movement restrictions or something that's holding them back from performing the exercise as well and achieving the range of motion that they need to, we want to do something to allow them to get to the new ranges of motion that they may not be able to get to or that we want for them out of the program. If someone is having back problems, for example, or something like that, we may want to give them some exercises to help warm up the back area specifically and get it ready for exercise. If someone's been sitting down all day, we want to reverse that kind of that kind of posture before we start the exercise program. So basically we're looking at not only warming up tissue quality, but we're also looking at the movement quality as well before they start training. And then we wanna look at on what will improve performance. So if we have a client who comes in and they move really well and everything's really good, we wanna give them stuff that's really specific to what they're going to do in the gym that day. So if they're looking at powerlifting type stuff, we wanna do some stuff that may be more relative to that. If we're doing a leg day, we want to make sure we get their legs warmed up properly, uh, increase tissue temperature, get ready for the movement pattern, rehearse it, practice it at lower intensities, etc. So what you can do from that is simply look at your clients, look what needs they have. If they have some specific needs to be able to move well, work on that first. If they move well, work on improving the, the actual outcome of the program. It's a really simple process, but people get it either one or two ways. They only focus on improving someone's mo movement and mobility to ridiculous ends, or they just do a warm-up set of squats and then they squat. Neither of those approaches are right or, or totally wrong, but they need to be done a little bit better and a little bit more intelligently. Now, next we wanna look at the main lifts. So a couple of things in the main lifts. We wanna program adequate volume, not excessive. We know by now that around 10 to 15 sets is kinda of like the sweet spot for volume for building muscle. There are cases to be made for higher amounts of volume, but for most of our general population clients, we don't need to go into these ridiculously high volume prescriptions. It's not necessary and it's not in line with their goal set as well. If they wanna be a bodybuilder, for example, they probably need more volume than that, but 10 to 15 sets seems to be pretty good for most people. It allows recovery, it allows training time to not be ridiculous, and it allows them to get a really good outcome, which is ideal. We also want to look for limiting factors as well in programming our main lifts, and this will fall more under the structure of the program. So for an example of this is, if we are going to use full body programming, we might not, it's probably not wise to do Romanian deadlifts as your main hamstring lift, and as your main back lift uh, to do a barbell bent over row. The reason being that the fatigue that's generated from the Romanian deadlift will impair the performance of the barbell bent over row, so the person won't get the best possible outcome. Same thing with doing chin-ups and then into normal barbell deadlifts. Even though they're totally opposite muscle groups, there is a limiting factor, which is the grip in that particular scenario. So we need to look at, with our main lifts, making sure that we program in a way where there's not a limiting factor that's going to get in the way of the person getting the most out of each of those lifts. So you may need to switch around your training week. Really simple concept, but one that a lot of people forget really easily. Now from here, we look at accessories. So accessories, we're simply looking at what's gonna support performance for that particular client. Whether that performance be more aesthetic or that performance be more actual lifting more tin off the ground. So if it's someone who's looking at aesthetic work for accessory performance, depending on their preference, it could be arms, it could be glutes, it could be calves, it could be whatever they need to bring up. If it's someone who's more of a strength type client, if it's bench press, is it weak triceps, shoulders, chest? Is it squat, is it weak quads, glutes, hips? By hips, um, and main glutes anyway, but adductors, whatever it could be. So accessory movements, we're looking at recommending what that person needs to build up for their goal. 
And then we look at the cooldowns. So there's been a lot of research on cooldowns and cooldowns don't really have the physiological benefits that they've been purported to have. But it doesn't mean the idea of doing cooldown is a bad thing. What we should use for our cooldown is do, to do what needs to be done. So the stuff that we would recommend our clients to do, but they probably wouldn't do it if they were doing an individual workout. So this is things like resilience work. So resilience work is doing things like Jefferson curls to condition the lower back against flexion. Uh, it could A lot of prehab work could be done in this uh, period, such as trap three raises, etc. So other thing you could do is also the client's rehab. If they have seen an allied health professional like a physiotherapist, and they've got something that they're working on, some kind of exercise to help them be more resilient and recover, this is where we could put it into the workout for that client. This is a really useful strategy to do because quite often people will skip their rehab or skip their prehab and not do the resilience work because it's kind of boring, it's not as fun. But we've got to remember the general population clients, the more that we can do with them, the stronger they're going to get, the better outcomes they're going to get. And these clients, when most of them come to us, they don't feel great. So we need to do stuff to help them build their tissue resilience, feel better, and therefore get better body composition results, strength results, and then refer us more clients so we can do the same process again and again. So guys, that's a very easy programming framework that you can use. Any questions, let me know. See you soon.